Hello everyone, my name is Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you visit and I'm going to show you something fun today and I uh, think I think you'll enjoy doing this little technique. Hopefully you'll get some different ideas that you can use in your own uh, art even if you don't do this. Maybe you can use it in other things. So let's just jump into it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make some ATCs. And ATCs, in case you're not familiar with those, are artist trading cards. So we're going to make some little artist trading cards. Little because the size is small. They're two and a half inches by three and a half inches. And they're meant to be traded with other people. Or, you know, what I do, rather than trade them, most of the time, instead of trading them, I put them in with other things, you know, with uh, mail or sending out cards. I might slip one in the card, you know, just as a little extra something, something for people. Okay, so the supplies that you're going to use are very simple for this. You can, I use watercolor paper. You could use other kinds of surfaces as well, but I find watercolor to be nice and sturdy. This is the specific one that I usually reach for, and it comes, I buy it at a store called Michael's here in the United States, and it is the Artist Loft watercolor pad. This one, they have it in two different weights. This one is the 140 pound. The reason I like this specific paper is because it's pretty smooth. It is a cold pressed paper, but it has a very smooth side on one side and, and it's pretty smooth on the other side. So I tend to reach for this. And it comes in different sizes of pads too. So if you buy the big one, you get a lot more bang for the, you know, surface that bang for your buck, get a lot more pieces out of one sheet. So they're cut two and a half inches by three and a half inches. So that's what I have here. Just some pre-cut watercolor paper pieces. You're going to need some tissue paper. I'm using this tissue paper that I bought at another craft store called Hobby Lobby. Uh, the Mary TA is the one that turned me on to this. She has a YouTube channel, so be sure and check her out. It's M-E-R-I A-T-A, which I think is A-T-E-L-I-E-R, I think, <laughs> but it's the Mary A-T-A. Anyway, Search for Mary, M-E-R-I, bet you'll find her here on YouTube. Anyway, this tissue paper I've used a lot. It's kind of a, it, it feels more like a tissue gift wrap. It has a, a little bit of a waxy, not waxy, but it's really smooth on one side. It's, it's not crinkly and crunchy like a lot of tissue paper, but we're going to use a little bit of that. And we're just going to, I'm just going to jump into it from there. Just going to jump right into it. So I'm going to bring in my cruddy board to put on my surface here. And I'm also also in this yeah, in this video, I'm going to be using our Mandala Madness inspiration cards and I'm going to be using them for inspiration, but I'm also going to be using them as an art supply. So I highly recommend, of course, that you have several <laughs> <laughs> more than one deck of the inspiration cards because they are so they're so great to use they really are uh, for so many things but we're going to use them as an art supply for creating the um, ATCs that we're going to do in this video so you can find the link to these down in the video description right below the video you'll find the link straight over to get those all right first things first <clears throat> I've cut my my ATC size, so I've cut that right down to two and a half by three and a half. I tend to work in this portrait sort of uh, orientation. There's no reason you can't do them in a landscape orientation. It's just totally up to you. This just seems to feel more natural to me, although I have some examples where I've done them this way as well okay so there you go so I have that and I do a bunch of these at one time rather than because if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get into doing this I do a bunch of them I don't just do one or two now you what you want to do is you want to glue this down to the to the uh, 
back side of the tissue paper. You can do this with whatever method you're comfortable with. Um, I just used a tacky glue. You can use a glue stick as long as it's a really good glue stick and it sticks very well to the, creates a good bond between the tissue and the um, uh, cardstock or the watercolor paper. Now you want to get this edge to edge, so be sure you spread this all the way to the edge because you really want a good adhesion between the two. In other words, you don't want any air bubbles if you can avoid them. So I'll do this to a whole bunch of them and then I put them under some weight and I just let them dry under some weight and that'll take a while because it's you know it is a wet glue so it'll take a little while for it to get good and dry and then I also usually take some kind of scraper you know it could be a key card or a old credit card or whatever or one of these bondo scrapers and then I just scrape that against the surface and you can do it on this side as well you may squeegee out a little bit of glue, but the whole point is you want this to have a really good bond to the surface. Now the paper's going to warp a little bit. That's why I put it under some heavy books or something so that it will dry and be nice and flat. And I'll do it to a whole bunch of these. Now if you don't have a... Um, if you don't have this specific tissue paper, you can use any tissue paper. You could use white tissue paper that you stamp and and do that. You know, you could put a script stamp on white tissue paper or other light colored paper. You want it to be kind of light though for the background, I think. Um, you could also use paper napkins that you split and use just a single layer of the paper napkin. So that's another thing you could do. All right, so we're going to put this away and pretend that that's all dry. And when it's all done, then I just cut rough cut a whole bunch of them out. And this one, you can see, is a little warped, but it'll straighten out after a while. By the time I'm done, it'll get all straightened out. And then what I do is I just sit down, and this is good TV work. And I just go around, and so I'll rough cut a whole bunch of them, and then I'll just sit down and trim them out. Like that. Now, when you do this, you will discover whether you have any corners or edges that aren't fully stuck down. And you can also use gel medium to do this, to stick the tissue paper onto the watercolor paper. In that case, you would paint the surface. If you're going to use something like a gel medium or a matte medium, you're going to paint the surface of the watercolor paper and the back side of the tissue paper and put them together and squeeze, you know, squeeze them with the, um, at least this is how I do it. I'll squeeze it then with the burnisher to make sure that there's really good adhesion. Now, after that's done, um, then what you want to do, and everything is dry at that point, then what you want to do is you want to take a brush and you want to give it a good coat of a gel medium of some kind. And so that I've already done this to this piece just to save some time. But you do want to have a good coat of gel medium on here to seal the paper. It really helps to, for the next step, to create the background that we're going to go for to seal that background with a nice a good gel medium doesn't have to be this brand it can be any kind any brand you want to use so that's already been done to this and then let that completely dry so that's that all right so for this technique which this technique i learned about a number of years ago from this book and um, also a video or i think it was a dvd class or an online class or something that that uh, Claudine taught and this is Claudine Helmuth's book this is her first book I did check and it does seem to still be available and so I will have a link in the description box below the video so if you if you don't have this and you want to get it it's it's a good resource for different techniques 
And this technique that we're going to do for the background is called the peeling paint technique. So that's what we're going to do. Now, her because she's using, using highly contrasting colors, she gets a lot of um, obvious peeling paint kind of look. But I'm not going to use highly contrasting colors, just a little contrasting color. And so that's what's going to happen next. So to make this work, you have white uh, or just, it's just petroleum, gen petroleum jelly. Okay, nothing fancy. You get it in a pharmacy or a discount store. So you just get some on your finger. Okay, so I've just got a glob of it on my finger. And then you just take it and kind of smear it haphazardly around the surface. When you do this now, you don't want to cover the entire surface. You just want to do some places here and there. Okay? So pick, oh, four, three or four or five bits on the surface. And I like to have it kind of run off the edge in some places. If I can catch the light here, you'll be able to, you can see the reflection of that. And if you want to connect some places, just, you know, connect it up a little bit. But you definitely want to have some of the background showing through the tissue paper. So don't coat it entirely with petroleum jelly. Just here and there. Okay? And then clean off your hands really well. And we're all done with that. And then the next thing you're going to do is thin some paint. So I'm just going to use craft paint. You can use whatever kind of acrylic paint you want to use. I would recommend acrylic. And I'm going to use white in this case, or this is warm white by Americana. And you can see I already have a mess. This is a this is my palette paper, so it's just palette paper that I have in a palette holder. And you're going to thin this down. And the thicker the paint, the more you're going to have to thin it down. So if you're using a tube acrylic, for example, that is going to be um, require even more thinning to get it to the consistency that we need it to be. So in the book, Claudine talks about using the consistency of chocolate syrup. So if you know what chocolate syrup consistency is that you might buy in a can, that is the consistency we're looking for. So in other words, it's got to be a lot creamier than this. So I'm using a palette knife and some water. And I just find this is the easiest way to um, get the, the water mixed into the paint. Okay, so just mix it into the paint till it's pretty. It's not, <clears throat> it's not soupy enough to do line work with, but it won't, definitely won't hold a peak. So a little bit of water doesn't take much. I'm going to wet my brush, my paintbrush, so I've just wet it and blotted it off to get the excess water off. And then you're going to take your freshly um, smeared card and then just pick up that paint and then lightly drag this over the surface of the card. Go right on top of the Vaseline. And the reason that you want to go lightly is because you don't want to smear or drag that Vaseline around with you. And you're going to be able to see that immediately it's going to start resisting. So you can see how it's going to resist the paint. That's exactly what we want it to do. And then that's it. So it doesn't take very much paint to do this. But that's all that you have to do to begin this technique. And then of course you want to clean out your paintbrush. Don't let acrylic paint dry in your paintbrush or you kind of have a mess and it's a tough time to get that 
sorted out. So I'm just wetting, putting water on the brush. And the next thing that I do is I, I personally just set this aside. Okay, I put it aside and I don't mess with it. I found for me that that was the best, that I got the best results by just setting this aside and letting it dry naturally. In the book, Claudine tells you that you can use a heat tool or heat gun to do this, you know, to dry it. I just find that that the Vaseline sometimes moves around a little bit more if you use a heat gun or heat tool on it. But you can see how it's resisting. And once you've done a couple of these, you'll be able to see, oh, I wish I had connected the Vaseline a little bit more. I mean, you just start to get a feel for the look that you personally like. All right, so this is going to set off to the side until that acrylic paint is totally dry. So here I've got a couple that are completely dry. But when you look at them, you can still see that, see that um, Vaseline reflecting in the light. So there's still Vaseline on there. All right, so at this point, I'm going to use a paper towel. And we'll just work on this one. I'm going to use a paper towel, and I'm going to pull that. Vaseline off. Now it's going to drag off some of the paint as well. So you see it's dragged some of that paint off as well. That's just the paint that's been been over the Vaseline, you know, when it was placed on there. So and it it can't stick to the Vaseline and so that's why it's coming off. So you want to go over this and keep changing your paper towel otherwise you just smear the greasy Vaseline around and you want to get as much of it off as you possibly can okay so there's that one all right let's do the other one just because it may look different So notice that I'm continually turning that paper towel to get it into a cleaner spot. If you were using a cloth towel, you would have to do the same thing. Just make sure that you are continually turning it so that you get rid of, you're, you're always working in kind of a clean spot, okay, like so. And you'll have the, all these little paint chips. See all those little paint chips? Just like it was peeling paint. It's a very appropriately named technique. All right, then you want to clean the cards. And this is another reason that the... Um, that watercolor paper works pretty well for this. You want to clean the cards. And Claudine actually ran them, cleaned them with soap and water. So if you have watercolor paper, it will stand up to that. I just find that, that using the um, baby wipe worked just fine for me. And you'll continue to pull off more of the paint depending on how much Vaseline you had on there and also to what, you know, how, how heavy handed are you at pulling the paint off. But what you really want to do is get that Vaseline off. So I'm just kind of buffing in the areas where that Vaseline is. But again, keep turning the baby wipe so that you're not just redepositing the paint back on the surface. So there's one, and then we'll do this one. So it will take one or two baby wipes to do this to make sure you get it off. 
and then I let the surface dry and then check it and see if I got it all. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes you think, oh, I got all the bait, all the Vaseline off, but maybe, maybe not. All right, so that's what you do. And then you're going to need to set those aside and let those completely dry. But you'll see this one is not, you know, not quite as successful in my opinion, but it's not really going to matter a whole lot. But it's not quite as successful as this one. This has more of that peeling paint kind of look about it. And uh, so this is really, this is really more the look that I prefer. But, you know, it just all depends. It's personal preference, right? Okay, so you're going to let that dry. And so we have some here that are already completely dried. So I'm going to show you what these look like. Because there's different effects. Different effects depending on how much of the Vaseline you have put on the surface and and uh, how much you've rubbed. And so sometimes you'll get these, you'll even get some edges built up around the, the uh, shapes of the Vaseline, which I think is really cool. So these are all nicely dried and ready to work on. At this point, now you're ready to take, because this is your background. Now, also, if you wanted to add another color onto this, um, just as an aside, because you could do this for art journaling or whatever else you might want to do as well. But if you want to add another color, you can just put some more Vaseline on this and put it over the painted area. Don't put it in the same spot you did before. Put it over some of the painted area, paint another color over it, and then repeat the process. And so then you would get the, the Vaseline would protect the color you have here, but it would allow the, um, uh, the new color to come in and color some of the, the rest of the background. So anyway, you can do that with a couple of colors. If you wanted to look like it was an old fence or something that had been painted several times. Okay, so at this point you're ready to decide what you're going to put on your on your ATCs. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Mandela Madness Inspiration Cards because I just thoroughly enjoy using them not only for inspiration as they were intended but also as an art supply so I have one deck that I've labeled as used and this is a whole bunch of things that I've gotten from one deck so I just pull out a card and they're wonderful to use as they are they're wonderful to use for the inspirational words the quote the instruction the images I mean they're they're great to use for lots of things but Hold your breath because what we're going to do is we're going to tear them apart. The this is nice thick cardstock, and so you can easily split it. I mean, you have to use, stick your thumbnail down in there and split it. And one half of it's going to be thicker than the other, but that's just the nature of the beast. But by doing this, then you have them split down to the thickness of paper, and then you can can use them for all different kinds of things. So what I've used them for is, I do what I call harvesting. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of different punches, but I do have a bunch of circle punches because I like circle punches. So I've taken a bunch of the cards that I've split apart, and then I have simply punched them or cut them out, fussy cut out elements. And sometimes this is one of the corner motifs because every one of the cards has two corner motifs up here. Sometimes they'll have little other little elements up here. So I just used a punch and punched that out of one of the cards. But that's where the, this other bit came from. That was one of the corners. And so I just start harvesting and, and making myself a whole bunch of art supplies ready to go because it's great when you have them all ready and then I kind of split them up so I put all the circles in one and I have several punches that are uh, different sizes of hexagons or squares I tend to like basic 
shapes and and you can get a lot of shapes out of one card if you use you know small punches or dies or what have you but you can get geometric so I leave the geometrics in one little baggie and I'm just splitting them up just for ease of uh, use and then I've used different punches like these are balloons I have a couple of balloon punches so I've punched out some of those and you can see I'm not picky about where I punch them unless it's like one of these where I did specifically center that punch over that shape and design and sometimes I miss Q and I don't even get the whole balloon this is a small balloon and it's like well that's okay I'll just put it on the edge cut it off anyway then I keep all the bits and pieces because you never know when there's just you just need that little bit that little piece for something and and little butterflies then I also cut out the quotes and the words because you never know when you're gonna have that you know the perfect word for an art journal page or one of these ATCs sometimes I cut the quotes apart and I'll take bits and pieces of the quotes um, like this this is all that's left of this quote the the word and but I'll use that for something and you get two sizes of the inspirational word so on the front side or the side where the color is it's a larger font than it is on the back so that's nice that you get you have two different sizes of the font of the word the inspirational word you can work with all right so I just do that cut them out and then I usually ink around the edges and my preferred ink is archival ink I just like it because it's uh, it dries permanently and the one I tend to reach for right now it changes from time to time the one I'm reaching for right now is cobalt blue so I've harvested all my stuff out of the the um, deck so I've harvested a bunch of stuff I don't do this all at once I'll just do some you know I'll sit down and I'll tear cards apart and and uh, cut things out or you know find a punch that'll punch right around that and punch that out I've even used these to put on the back of envelopes as you know kind of like a, a decoration on the back of an envelope which is a lot of fun to do and then you'll end up with you end up with a whole bunch of, of um, stuff holy things and I don't throw these away either because there you never know where there's some little bit of something that I can use to fill in on some, some project okay so I've got my art supplies then I take my backgrounds like these that are all done and all dry and also if you want to round these corners you can certainly do that with a corner rounder and then I take my cards and I start playing with the bits and pieces so I play with the bits and pieces and figure out where I want things to go and just for the sake of time I did these ahead of time and so I uh, picked out the pieces that I wanted and I've put them I've glued them onto the cards so I'm going to give you a real close-up of each one I've glued them onto the cards and I, again I just use tacky glue to glue them on there I like to have things running off the edges and so that's what I did here so then I'll just come back with scissors and trim off the excess so I like to have those little bits and pieces now you'll notice that the balloon baskets not connected to the balloon but you know we'll get it and this little bit right here this was an element from one of the cards you know I took like this tiny little element right here cut it out it wasn't this one but one similar and glued it onto the balloon just just because it was seemed like the thing to do and then I took two different cards two different quotes learn to relax and then I took bits and pieces from another one steady perpetual serenity you know it doesn't have to make sense it only has to make sense to me <laughs> so that's that one but you can still see plenty of the background peeking through Here's another one. This is the bigger balloon punch. Expand. 
use everything as an opportunity. That seemed that nece didn't necessarily go with that on the card, but it seemed like it made sense to me, so I used that. I'm always looking for different ways to use words and different combinations of words. So we've cut that bit off. And then this is the third one that I prepared. And um, the punch, this is actually the punch for this little balloon. It has the basket as well as the balloon shape for this little guy. This is a Fisker's punch, I believe. The thing is, that little basket's really hard. That little shape right there is hard to keep up with. So I tend to just pitch that and then just cut a little basket shape from the same card to make it go with it. You know, that's just what I do. You can do whatever you want, right? This is the other balloon. It is, this is an EK Success punch. But that's where those came from. And this one says peace, and this is the actual quote. I just cut it apart. And you can see by edging it with the archival ink, and I even edged, I think I edged all these pieces here with the archival as well. It makes it, starts making it show up right away. So that is what you do. I let them, I glued them together with the uh, tacky glue. And then I put some parchment or wax paper on top of them and let them sit with a heavy book on top of them. Now you're going to be able to see if I hold it up that they're still a little bit curved. And, and we forgot to cut this one off. They're still a little bit warped, but like I said, that just doesn't bother me a whole bunch. Now, I like to go around the edges with the archival ink, so I just add a little bit of ink around the edges, like so. But you can see what a difference that makes just having that ink versus not having it inked. It just frames it. It gets your draws your eye into it. So I do that to all of them. And then I start playing with the details. You know, what kinds of detail things do I want? Well, the basket's got to get connected to my um, to my balloon, right? So I tend to always reach for either a paint pen or the jelly roll pins. So we'll just grab one of these. And the Moonlight sets are my favorites. They just happen to be the ones I really like. And so I just connect the basket to my balloon. And sometimes the pin kind of wanders off in its own direction because you're working over kind of a bit of a bumpy surface. And so I connect those two together. If you want to suggest movement, you can just, you know, give it a little bit of movement to suggest that the balloon is moving. Um, another thing that I like to do is I like to go around. Now you can be really picky about this or you can just, I'll show you some of the other ones I've done where I'm not picky about it. I just sort of use more of a free form outline, but there is, especially close up, it does make a bit of a difference when you, they have that inky outline. More often than not, I will just sort of let it be more free form like this, just to kind of call out the text, but you can see how this shows up more than that. Another, another thing I like to do is add just a little bit of a, a little extra border around the edge. So you can do that in dotted lines. You can do it with solid lines. So I would carry on around the rest of it. And then if the ink, if the border, the inked border doesn't show up enough, I go back and add some more. So I'll do that. But you just kind of play with it and just doodle and have fun with it and see what kinds of things you can come up with. So let me find my finished cards here. Here's one. So here's one that's finished. Now on this one, because you can kind of see the doodly um, outline around that one. 
so it's not meant to be precise. And here I've added three dots, you know, just to do it. And this, Dreams Come True, you will find it. That came from one of the Tim Holtz, um, came from this one, the Clippings Stickers. The Clipping Stickers. So I found something that seemed like it would work. This may even be from two different things. I don't know. And I just, I always add a little bit of glue to secure those. Even though they're stickers, I glue them down with uh, some glue. And so that's what I did on that one. So you can get the idea of how they're, this one is completely finished. Here's a couple done in the landscape direction. And this is using the punched hexagons. And this has a quote from the deck. And then this was another one of the, the um, I think it was from the Small Talk set, I believe. I have a bunch of these that I draw from a lot. So there are all these different choices, and I use these a lot for adding text and words and so forth to whatever I'm doing, journal pages or, or ATCs or whatever. So there's that one. And then this was another one. I just punched a bunch of butterflies. This all, all these butterflies come from one punch. I punched out several, punched it several times, and then I just made a little path of butterflies and then just added um, the quote, just cut it apart. And I don't know if this word came with that. You know, if that was on the same card, didn't it doesn't matter to me because I'm just building something new from them. Now you don't have to do this technique and just as a way of showing you some other ways to use these. This is a bookmark done with the same little butter or uh, balloon. So it's the same balloon and again the little wavy lines but on black you can see how how much they the colors pop against black so this is just a little bookmark some other atcs and bookmarks the same sort of idea here's another we'll just line up the bookmarks here here's with one of the big balloons and more of a doodly effect here's another one and this one, this one I really like with all the circles. And then I just put a line and added dots all over the line. But that one I just, I love that. And another one with the balloon. And you can see sometimes when I punch them out, I'll catch part of the signature. So that's got part of my name there. And so if that really bothers me, I can go back with other pins and I can color that out if I don't want that. But I, I like the way that that punch fit in that section of the card. So, um, bookmarks. And then some ATCs done in, on the black. In a similar fashion, so you can see on this one, I used a punch, a corner punch. It wasn't the corner rounder. It was an angle, corner angle and um, did that one and just added the quote and then also you can do other things you can make artist trading coins recently i did a live stream which i do once a month here on youtube and we did artist trading coins and the process is the same just exactly the same except the format is round so it's a two and a half inch round and I just have them stuck in these pockets. They're, they're loose, they can come out, but these are baseball sleeve pockets. And so you can trade them in the same way or you can use them as ornaments or bookmarks, just like so. This one is a big punch of one of the motifs from one of the cards with another motif from one of the other cards used in the center. This one is, is one motif. That's another one. There's the balloon. Uh, this was a, one of the motifs with another one in the center and then a word just put over the top. This one is two different motifs, fussy cut from the cards and then a circle 
for the middle of that one. These are all just small circles punched out of the cards. Uh, again, they're not punched from the thick card. They're punched from the split, split apart artwork. And then I just made balloons out of them. Same thing on this one. Uh, this is one design here that I, I cut out as a circle and then I just added to the the edge and here are just some of the butterflies that I put on there. So that is how those are done and then one final thing to show you this is using the various bits and pieces from the deck and then just covering a journal. So all of these are glued onto a moleskin journal. This one happens to be the one that has no lines in it, so it's a great sketchbook. And I just played and doodled all around it. So I um, these were black to begin with, and so it made a perfect surface for adding gel pen work right over it. Because some of the gel pens, the jelly roll pens, some of them are great for working on black surfaces. Some of them, uh, not so much. But this, the the ones that work really well over the black are the either the white pen, of course, or the moonlight pens work really well on top of black. Now, if you wanted to go back here, just as a another thought, if you wanted to go back and you wanted to pop those balloons up off the surface. For example, this one, which has not had any pen work done on it. You can use something like a, um, I like Inktense pencils, and so you can use an Inktense pencil and a water brush like this. So pick up the pigment directly from the tip of the pencil, and you can come in here and just give it a subtle shadow around. And so then I'll wipe the brush off and then I come back and I blend out the edge. So it's actually going to just shadow, give it a very subtle shadow. And sometimes I have to do it a couple times to get it to show up as much as I want. You can also mark directly on the ATC. I find it a little easier to control if I do it this way and build it up in layers. But that way, you can see that, especially over here where I put a little bit more pigment, it can kind of pop it up off the surface. So those, all of those little tips and tricks are things that you can do to embellish your ATCs. And after this dries, then I would come back and I would add more um, details using the Jelly Roll pens. So that is that. I hope you've enjoyed the process. of um, of learning how to do this with the ATCs and the Mandela Madness cards. And you'll again you'll find all that information in the description box below the video. And I will see you again soon. Be sure and come over and check us out at howtogetcreative.com. Again, my name is Barb Owen. And I will see you in the next video or in the next live stream. And remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. I'll see you again next time. Bye.